Hello, David here, and welcome to a tutorial on the ABB Robots Connectivity Plugin in Visual Components, where you will learn how to process a program into ABB's rapid language and run the code on a virtual controller. To begin, you should have ABB Robot Studio installed, and in Visual Components, enable the Connectivity Plugin. And we are also using the post processor add on available from the Visual Components Forum. To install the add on, extract the download into your Visual Components My Commands folder and restart the application. The post process button will then appear on the right in the program tab. We will include links to anything that is required in the video description. Let's begin by examining this layout where we have a machine tending cell, including a parametric lathe and one ABB robot. And going to the program tab, we can check the program editor on the left. In the main routine, we have an init routine call, and after that we have the main work cycle inside a while loop. The robot first picks a part from the conveyor, places it to be machined, and then places it on the conveyor. The robot is connected to other components using signals. So let's open the signal editor and select the robot to examine the signals. To begin, the robot gripper is connected to robot outputs 101 and 102. And the same parts on the input side are used as the feedback signals from the gripper. Then we have an end block component acting as a sensor on the infeed conveyor, which is connected to input 111. And we have the parametric lathe connected to robot outputs 121, 122, and 123. And we get the feedback signals from the machine to the same ports on the input side. And now let's close the signal editor and run the simulation to see how the robot functions. It waits for a part, picks it up and places it in the lathe, and once it's been machined, it is placed in the output conveyor. And the goal of this tutorial is to post process this Visual Components program into ABB's rapid language and run the code on a virtual controller. And since the virtual controller is connected to our visual components model, we can verify the robot program and receive accurate robot motion simulations from the virtual controller while also receiving accurate cycle time for our application. Now let's pause and reset the simulation. Before we connect, we must first create the ABB Robot Studio model for this robot. So let's open Robot Studio and create a solution called Machine Tending and click Create. A solution is like a project in Robot Studio, containing the 3D model and related virtual controllers. And with the solution created, we have an empty layout in Robot Studio where we need to create a robot system. But let's first return to Visual Components to check which robot we are using, which in this case is the 15 kilo variant of the IRB 2600 ID. And returning to Robot Studio, we'll open the ABB library and select the same robot, choose the 15 kilo capacity, and click OK. So we now have our robot in the 3D world, but it doesn't have a virtual controller yet. So using the robot system option, we'll select from layout to create a virtual controller for our robot. We'll change the name to R1 for robot1 and below we can select the robotware version for our controller. And note that any of the recent versions of robotware should work with the connectivity plugin. And then click next and next again. And here we could select options for our controller, which we don't need right now, so we just click finish. 
and we must then wait until the controller status in the lower right corner turns green, indicating that our robot controller has been created and is online. So now let's return the visual components to post process our robot program. So with the robot selected from the program tab, we will select the post process button on the right and add a file name and location where we will save our robot file. We'll call it main module, use our downloads folder and click save. As you'll see from the output message panel below, the post processor created a second file alongside the program file and this eio.cfg file is a signal configuration file that we will use later. And now returning to Robot Studio, we can load the program we just post processed. Using the Rapid tab from the Controller Tree panel on the left, expand the Rapid Tree, where by default the robot has a Module 1 program module, which we'll right click on and select Delete. And then right clicking on the TROB1, we select Load Module to load our own module. Then locate the main module post process file we saved to our downloads folder and click open. A synchronize to station dialog will appear, which we can use to synchronize the data in our program to station, which is the 3D world in Robot Studio. And if we wish to see the robot targets in the 3D view, we need to synchronize the data from rapid to station. Checking the R1 root node at the top will select all items in the list and then click OK. And now let's set the code editor to run side by side with the 3D view by right clicking on the tab name and select New Vertical Tab Group. And from the 3D view, we can now see the frames indicating that we have synchronized the program to the 3D station. The post processor will create everything required by the program, such as the work object data, tool data, and all robot targets in the same file. And then you have the program structure as rapid code. And the only errors you should experience at this point are these errors coming from the IO statements, stating that the identifier is not found for the signals. And these errors occur as we need to define any I.O. signals manually to use in a program, since by default the robot controller in ABB's environment does not have any signals defined. And at this point, we can use the EIO signal configuration file created by the post processor. So from the controller tree on the left, right click on the configuration and select load parameters and select the .cfg file that was saved to our downloads folder and click open and then OK and OK again. And if we now expand the configuration node in the tree and select the IO system and select signal from the configuration IO system tab that appears on the right, you can see that we loaded these IO signal definitions from the configuration file. So we don't need to create these signal aliases manually. And to apply these configuration changes to the robot controller, we need to warm start it by clicking restart above and click OK. The controller status on the lower right will indicate that the controller is restarting while turning green when it is back online. And now returning to the tab Containing the rapid code, the I.O. statement errors are gone, so we are ready to establish the connection and test the program on the virtual controller. So returning to Visual Components and selecting the Connectivity tab from the Configuration panel on the left, we can create a server under the ABB Robot plugin. Right-click on ABB Robot and select Add Server. And if you have a virtual controller running on the same PC, it should appear in the Edit Connection panel on the right. And here we can see 
that our R1 virtual controller is running. If you wanted to connect a real controller, you could add its IP address to the server URL field. And note that a real ABB robot controller requires a PC interface option to support the connection with the plugin. However, in the virtual environment, a PC interface is not required. We will select our virtual controller and use the test connection option below. And the connection succeeded prompt shows us that it's working and we'll finish by clicking apply from the lower right corner. And now let's connect to the server using the connect control here. And now we can add variable pairings to our variable groups. So first, right clicking on the server to simulation group, select add variables, which will launch the create variable pairs panel. And if some of the trees don't appear, in the Create Variable Pairs view, right click and click Reload Simulation Structure. And now we need to connect the joint values from the virtual controller, which will be driving the simulation model in visual components. From the virtual controller, you can see the joint values on the Motion System ROB1 and the ROB Joint folder, where there are six joint values. And in our visual components tree on the left, we will search using the term value to list the value property of each joint in our model. And scrolling to navigate to the ABB IRB2600 ID, which is using the IRC5 robot controller, and holding the control key, we'll multi select all the value properties below each axis. And over on the server side, we'll hold the shift key and select the first and last values in the ROB joint folder. And then clicking pair selected, the pairings are added to the list below. And now we need to connect the outputs from server to simulation so that any output triggered in the virtual controller should trigger the output in the visual components model. So then collapsing the motion system folder tree and expanding the IO system folder where we can see the DO and DI signals in the visual component side on the left, make sure you have signal maps checked. And let's now reset our search field and expanding the robot in the tree, we can see the inputs and outputs on the tree. We will open the outputs and start pairing. So first on server side on the right, we will select D01 and pair it with output port 1 on the left for the grasp action and click pair selected. And the other output ports are located after the index of 100. So holding shift, select five ports from D0101 to D0123 on the right. And on the left, Scroll until we see output port 100 and holding control, multi select the corresponding ports 101, 102, 121, 122, and 123 to pair five signals on both sides and click pair selected. And in the paired variables panel below, we can double check that the pairings were created correctly. So now we will select the simulation to server variable group to pair the input signals. So any inputs triggered in the visual components model should trigger inputs in the virtual controller. And scrolling back up on the left side and collapsing the outputs tree, expand the inputs tree. And on the server side on the right, holding shift, we will select six inputs from DI101 to DI123. And holding control, we will select the corresponding six inputs on the left. And click pair selected. And again, we can check from the paired variables panel below that the pairings were created correctly. 
So now that we have everything paired, we can close the Create Variable Pairs panel. Before we start testing, we need to select the robot and from the Component Properties panel on the right, in the Executor tab, uncheck the Is Enabled property so that the robot will no longer execute the program of the Visual Components Executor. Instead, we will pass the controller to the external virtual controller. And now we are ready to test. But before that, we will group our applications side by side. To place the apps side by side, drag the Visual Components window down and holding your Windows key and using your left arrow, place it on the left. And from the group of open apps that appear on the right, Select ABB Robot Studio. When in this view, to view the 3D layout in Visual Components, we will use the Auto Hide control to hide the Connectivity Configuration panel on the left and Component Properties panel on the right, and use the Show Variables command on the ribbon above if the Connected Variables panel does not appear below, which we will use to visualize the pairings should we need to do any debugging. And in ABB Robot Studio, on the right, we will use a similar auto hide control to hide the controller panel on the left, so we can have a better view of the 3D layout in that app as well, alongside the ABB Rapid code being executed on the right. In ABB Robot Studio, there are many ways to start a program. In this example, we will select the Rapid tab and first select the Program Pointer by right-clicking on the code and select Set Program Pointer to Main in all tasks, so that the program will start at the beginning of the main routine. And we can run the program from the Test and Debug group by clicking Start. So now the robot starts the program and let's then click to play the simulation on the visual component side. And the robot there is now executing its program on the virtual controller in ABB Robot Studio. And this way we are able to achieve accurate motion simulation with the help of this connectivity plugin. And everything seems to be working as the robot moves correctly and the IO signals are controlling the external devices correctly. And this concludes the lesson. Thank you for watching.